tribe. It is Saturday. I am so glad it is Saturday and we are certainly going to have a nice slow Saturday with family. My sister-in-law and her husband are coming over to us today and um, we are going to make a poiki and we are going to watch the second rugby uh, match, rugby test match between South Africa and New Zealand. So that is certainly going to be enjoyable. I will rather not um, knit or crochet while the match is going on. That will not be good. I can do that when I'm watching cricket. I love watching sport while crafting, but not rugby. It won't work. I get um, very involved in the game. Let's say that. Yes. I think if I was knitting and um, South Africa was going for a try, it would be harklip, 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 and all the stitches would be off. So I would rather not knit this afternoon and I will not crochet. I will just watch the rugby and um, continue my crafting afterwards. Last week we gave the All Blacks a beating and it was so good. So maybe just we can do it again today. Okay. So what was your week like? You want to know what my week was like? I was feeding the frog. This was a horrid week for me as far as crafting is concerned. My word. Let me first tell you what happened with log cabin patchwork. Ugh. Um, I used to get these very painful blisters on my fingers. And we couldn't figure out what was causing it. I even went to see the doctor and he said to me, he thinks it's stress related. And that didn't make sense to me because I got them at periods of time where I had very little stress. So I couldn't figure it out. And um, there are times when I'm not knitting or crocheting, where I'm in between projects, where I'm maybe weaving something or I'm spinning something or I'm just working on the computer, finalizing patterns and photos and things, where a whole week can go by where I don't craft maybe even two and then earlier this year I started working on something and it was nearly instantly within a day I got the blisters and my husband looked at me he says you know I've been watching this thing now for a couple of months making mental notes this happens every time you start crafting it's either your knitting needles or your crochet hooks but this is related to you working a lot with the yarn. And I was like, hmm, that's very interesting. So I put the stuff down deliberately. And eventually it takes about a week for it to clear up. It cleared up and it went away. And then I picked it up again and immediately they came out again. And I thought, well, maybe he's onto something. So we tested it again, put everything down, wait until they cleared and I took out my, um, but by that time, lock cabin patches had a piece done already. I took out my old Ilona wooden hooks, the ergonomic Ilona heritage hook and I started working with that and nothing happened. My hands were fine. Then I took out, uh, I was working at that stage with the Tulip Etima Rose hooks. I took them out and I continued and out came the blisters. Put it down, wait until it's cleared. Take out my crochet hook, my wooden hook. Nothing happened. Made one block, put the crochet hook down, took out the Tulip hook out came the blisters so I thought okay he, he's got something here so then I continued with the Ilona heritage hook when I finally put that thing down on the floor to see what it looked like it was a mess because the tension was all over the place between the two different hooks my tension was totally different and um, the tension with the um, wooden hook 
is much more loose than with the steel hook and you would actually think it should be the other way around because the wooden hook has got more surface drag than the metal hook but yet my tension was terrible it was way too loose with the wooden hook and I didn't want to go back to the tulip hook I actually sold the entire set and at that time my daughter was here from Sweden for a month so I didn't crochet much I just put it down and we were spending a lot of time with the girl and when she left I decided okay I will have to redo this thing but I have to use a 3.5 hook instead of a 4 because my tension is now too loose so I have to redo the entire lock cabin patchwork so be it started with the three and a half in the last few days that she was here and then she left and she was there and um, my friend Alta came and she visited me and she looked at it and she said sure but you're working very stiff but I just brushed off I didn't really think about it and a couple of days after that I looked at this thing and I thought what actually happened was I had a blister on my finger not uh, not that dermatitis contact dermatitis blister whatever was causing that I had a proper friction blister I crocheted myself a blister because I was working so tight with the 3.5 hook it's not the hook size that was wrong I was holding the yarn I was fighting with the yarn and I sat there and I thought why is this happening and I realized I am so upset with my daughter having gone back I had so much emotional issue at that time and I was putting it into my crochet work I was pulling the yarn so tight and holding so tight and I was fighting with the crochet work in my hand and it just made me realize you know we put so much of our emotions into our crafting really it's amazing I've noticed this once before when I was spinning um, something happened and I was very upset about it and the the batch of roving that I had spun up was so tight and overspun it was terrible because I was treadling so fast to get rid of the anger and the frustration that um, I had to throw it away it was a total mess so anyway I looked at this and I thought well the only way I can continue with this is to continue with this very tight tension and I don't want to do that because I was I had to crochet with the plaster on my finger so guess what I restarted that thing for the third time so for the third time I am now doing lock cabin patches version 1 and version 2 are laying there on the couch looking at me and I've restarted it so so be it so we might slip out a month or so I'm not sure that I would be finished by October we'll see but you know what shit happens life happens if we have to move the thing out a month then so be it it's not the end of the world it's okay the knitting project that I'm working on wasn't much better I did um, bespoke bespoke I called it bespoke because the design was a direct request from Alta and Michelle that's the raglan sweater with the cables that run on the raglan lines and then cables here down the side under the arm v-neck and they wanted a measure and make pattern and first of all the math on the v-neck to make a measure and make was disastrous but with measure and make I really know my size I can knit an entire jumper for myself without having to fit it normally but this time round what I did was I had a cable running down here and on the back raglans and then when we meet the two panels here those two cables combined into a very fat cable running down 
and everything was fine I was like I think I crocheted I knitted down the body for about 30 centimeters already and when I fitted it I realized this thing is too small it was more than 30 I was nearly done with the body I posted a, a, a picture of that on social media I lost 15 centimeters of ease around the body because of the cable panels that pulled in that's like six inches so the body was way too tight so I ended up frogging that entire sweater that was knitted with mohair Ooh. my language was less than savory anyway so I started again and um, I changed the cable to um, not cable every second row but rather every fourth row so that the pulling effect is not that much okay so let me show you what it looks like it's far from finished obviously um, let me just get all the oh I think I took this thing out now on the wrong side this is now there's now a major cook spool going on here because I'm working with four balls of yarn not just two four um, <clears throat> because the um, hey, this is now really a mess. <clears throat> Let me take the balls out. That's going to be easier. Um, I'm working with hand-coloured yarn, and it was so interesting. There's a slight colour difference between 500 gram and 500 gram of the yarn, and that happens because the yarn came from two different cones. So interesting, isn't it? Anyway, so to make that work, this is still tangled, but never mind. I will try to fix that just now. Oh, this is a mess. Give me a few seconds. Let me untangle this. Let me just figure out what is going on here. This is now a disaster. Okay. So, like I said, this is far from finished. Um, it's a v-neck and you can see the cable running down on the raglan line and then here where it meets on the side it makes for a lovely broad cable running down on the side so this is bespoke and um, this is merino double knit with um, mohair lace mohair how double it's going to be very nice and warm and the luxury feel of it is just amazing i'm quite happy with the way this is coming out so um, i need to put about another five centimeters on the body then the body is done and then it's just the sleeves and that go fairly quickly um, i don't really suffer from second sleeve syndrome or second sock syndrome with knitting but with crochet if I have to make four of the same blocks oh, I absolutely hate it anyway so yeah this project is going it is due to be released at the end of August um, the testers are also busy already so we will see whether we make the deadline but i'm very excited about it it's got a very nice feel yeah so this is bespoke and this will come at the end of august now my husband looked at it while i was knitting and he something that he doesn't he, he doesn't really do that he stuck his hand out and he felt the knitting he sat like this and I was wondering this is weird and he said I really like the feel of this it feels so soft and squishy and I said yeah it's it's really very nice with the mohair and he said I want one like this I was like you want what you want mohair I was so surprised I really didn't think he would like it but yeah he wanted something with mohair and then came the dreaded words. He said, 
I would like a black one. And I was like, you can't be serious. Oh, I don't even knit a jersey for myself in black. I mean, this, this black beanies that I did a while ago took me months to get to a point where I was willing to knit with black. I can't see. I'm getting old. <laughs> I looked at him and I thought, I wonder if I love you enough to knit for you in black. And while I was still thinking about the answer to that, thinking, how am I going to survive this? Where am I going to sit and knit this so that I can see? He said, maybe rather a dark charcoal, then I can wear it with navy as well. And I was like, oh, this is getting better. So I said, you know, a light gray will actually look better with navy than, than a dark charcoal. And he says, yeah, you're right. Light gray will be fine. And I was like, oh, praise God. I don't have to knit with black. So I ordered him. My husband is a big bloke. He's not small. He's a big bloke. So I thought, and this winter he was really, really cold. He was complaining bitterly about the cold. So I thought, okay. And he likes mine. That is quite thick because it's double knit and mohair. So I thought I'm going to one up. I'm going to get Aaron and mohair so that I can knit on nice thick needles to make him a nice thick jersey for winter. So I ordered African Expressions Harmony in a light grey and Hope. This Hope is their lace mohair and Harmony is the the air and weight merino. This is pure merino and this is pure kit mohair, super fine kit mohair. And um, it arrived yesterday and he was very excited when he saw the box. So I will have to move my ass and get bespoke done so that I can start on this. He initially said, or he rather he did say, he said, so far he said, he wants the same as mine. I'm not going to knit this again. I, after having started bespoke over for a second time, I'm not going to do it again. I will do something else for him and write the pattern down while I'm at it. So I don't yet know what it's going to look like. I'll find out from him probably tomorrow when we have time to sit and just chat what he wants. Does he want a crew neck? Does he want a v-neck? Does he want cables? What does he want? And um, then I will make it will be a formal more formal men's sweater because he wants to wear it with his formal pants to work in winter time and i will have to move my butt because it's starting to get spring here in south africa the first of september is officially spring and then it won't be so nice to knit anymore especially not with mohair but um luckily this damn house that we're living in is so cold it's like a fridge in here so it will still be quite cold in the house until end of September, maybe even in October. So, and we are only moving at the end of October. Yeah, we have to move at the end of October. We have to move and we've decided to move back to Pretoria. We're going to look for a rental house in Centurion so that he's close to work. And um, I'm actually quite excited about it. I don't like the city. I don't like Pretoria. I like out of the city but um, being in the city means that I'm going to be close to some nice yarn shops again and maybe there are social crochet groups or social knitting groups that I can join which would be very nice for me because I'm quite isolated here where I am so yeah I'm trying to find the the positive in the situation even though I'm moving back to the city um, it's going to be closer to good yarn shops because here there are two shops that sell yarn and they only sell charity, nothing else. So there's nothing for me there. <clears throat> yeah, that one shop is actually a quilting shop and the other one is a hobby shop, a crafter shop that has one shelf of yarn. So it will be nice for me to get closer to nice yarn shops. And I know there are some in Centurion. I've just never visited them because I never lived close by there. We'll see what will come up there. Okay, so today I'm going to 
I'm now going to sit and crochet a little bit on lock hem and patches. Um, I'm probably going to crochet the whole day except when the rugby is on because that won't work either, not even with the crochet hook. Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to sit quietly and knit on my bespoke and see if I can get, I'll definitely get the body done tomorrow and um, then I'll start with the sleeve. So maybe, maybe by next week Saturday I might be able to show you a bespoke. I don't know if I will be able to finish it. I might need another week but we'll see. Yeah, so that is my plans and hopefully this week I won't be feeding the frog. Really, I've had enough of that. If I could see my frog, I think he would be this big fat African bull frog. <sighs> yeah, shit happens. I don't have an interview for you today. The person that I wanted to interview wasn't available and um, I was so sad about it that I couldn't make up my mind who to ask in her place. So I'll have an interview for you again next week. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope your frog is as skinny as shit, not getting any food from you whatsoever because mine needs to go on a diet now. Right, I'll see you next Saturday. Have a lovely slow Saturday.